Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the haze removal tool and how to use it in Affinity Photo. I'm ashamed to say that for the longest time, I didn't know Affinity Photo had this tool because for whatever reason, Affinity Photo never placed it in the developer persona, nor was it an adjustment layer. But I'm really glad that they actually have this tool. So I'm really excited to be showing you how to use it. But first, let's discuss what the haze removal tool is. The haze removal tool is used to remove slight to extreme cases of haze affecting an image. Its most typical use is for landscape photography where the haze causes low contrast and low saturation. But it can also be used to improve images taken during rainy and foggy conditions. In reality, you can use the tool in pretty much any situation where the image looks dull and very low contrast. The haze removal tool has three settings. It has a distance setting, which controls the depth of the haze removal. Moving the slider to the right removes haze towards the background of the image. It also has a strength setting, which specifies how strong the haze removal effect should be. More strength results in more extreme haze removal. Finally, it also has an exposure correction setting, which allows for correction of the image's exposure if the haze removal causes underexposure or overexposure. So now that we know what the haze removal is, let's demo it with some examples. So here we are in Affinity Photo, and this image is an ideal image to use with haze reduction. For whatever reason, the shot was taken with the wrong settings or in the wrong conditions, and it produced this low contrast image. To access haze removal, just click on the filters menu item here. Click on haze removal. It has the three sliders available. The distance slider is supposed to control the depth of the haze removal and moving the slider to the right removes haze towards the background of the image. Now for most images, I find that it's best just to, just to keep this slider at maximum. It seems to work fine. The next slider here is the strength slider, and this is the one which you will normally adjust depending on how much haze removal you want or how much contrast you want in the image. And you could also reduce the exposure here. And, that's, and in many cases, this will improve the image one way or the other. In many low contrast images, reducing the exposure brings back more color and detail. So it's a nice slider to have. So I would normally just adjust strength and exposure when I'm adjusting haze adjustment. Another nice thing about this haze removal is it has compare buttons built in. Just click the middle button here in order to bring up split view and you can see the difference. So you can see it's really night and day and what the haze removal can actually do. It also has a mirror view here, which is another way to compare before and after. So that's a nice touch that the haze removal actually has a, some comparison mechanism built in. But again, it is a destructive adjustment. So when you click apply here, there's no way to use a mask to actually bring back the original or to reduce the effect. This adjustment is baked in into this layer. So let's try the haze adjustment in a raw file now. So in this raw file, you can see that the sky is pretty washed out, which is very different from what I saw in the scene. So I would like to use the haze removal to make this image pop a little bit more, especially the sky area. So unfortunately, the haze removal tool is not built into develop persona, which would be the more intuitive implementation since every raw editor has a haze removal slider, but for whatever reason, Affinity did not place the haze removal slider in develop persona. That's an unfortunate thing, but we hope Affinity will improve that in the future. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make the basic raw adjustments here. So let's brighten up the shadows a little bit and just darken the highlights a little bit. So that looks fine. So now let's click develop so that we go into to bring us into photo persona. So now that we're in photo persona, let's use the haze removal tool. So we go into filters, haze removal, and there you go. 
right? So you can see the sky now has much more color and detail. You can adjust the strength, as you see here, to your liking, and the exposure as well. And then we can click Apply once we are fine with this shot. So here we are with my final example. So far, what we have done is we've applied the haze removal to the entire image. But what if we want to apply haze removal to only part of an image? In this case, let's apply the haze removal to just the boat because the boat is a little bit washed out, not much contrast in the boat. And I'd like to use the haze removal tool to bring back a little bit more detail and definition in the, the boat area. Once again, because this is a raw file, we'll do the basic adjustments in Develop Persona. So all I'm going to do here is just brighten the shadows and then maybe the highlights just a little bit. So the highlights, you can see it's applying it to the whole image and I don't like the way that's looking. Actually not going to use the highlight tool here. I will adjust the saturation a little bit to make the colors pop a little bit more because the raw image is looking very dull and lifeless. So I'm just gonna click on develop here. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this, this layer because I only want to apply the haze removal to part of an image. Let's apply the haze removal to the top layer here. So we can go here into filters, haze removal. Okay, so I want it to affect the, the boat area. So I'm just going to enhance the strength a little bit more, like so. As I'm trying to target this boat area, it's affecting the, the entire image in an ugly way. So if I reduce the exposure here, you can see that there's some nice detail brought back from the boat, from the haze removal, but again, I don't like the effect that it's having on the rest of the image. What we need is actually to mask out everything except the boat, okay? So how do we do that? So let's just apply this right now, okay? So we need to create a mask. So to create a mask, there are many ways to do that, but since we're using Affinity Photo 2.0, let's just use Illuminance Mask for this. So I'm going to click on Mask Layer. I'm going to choose the Luminosity Range Mask. Okay, and since I'm going to try to affect the bright areas here, I'm just going to create the curve in this way, right? And I can just do a preview here. So what I'd like is this boat area to be completely white while the rest will be black. Let's just make some adjustments here. All right, so there it is. So our mask is actually created. And so you can see that the effect is now looking a little bit better. However, unfortunately, the sky is still being affected by the haze removal. So, so let's just edit the mask to get rid of this bright areas here. So just right click on the thumbnail, click edit mask, and then just use the paint brush here and choose a black paint. Uh, so let's just bring back the, the mask here. All right, so I'm just going to just paint over this. Okay, so let's just make sure that it's completely black. And there you go. So that's looking a lot better. Now, another thing that you could fix is this boat is still not completely white, right? So again, we have to enhance this mask further. So let's just use a compound mask here to enhance the boat area a little bit more. We'll just add a compound mask here. Click compound mask. We're just gonna drag this layer inside the compound mask. Okay, so we have now that layer in the compound mask. And then let's add another layer just to make sure that this mask is completely white. So I'm gonna add an empty mask here. I'm going to drag it inside the compound mask. And so if you've watched my other videos, you know that the operator here is set to an and. So it are going, it's going to add the mask tones from the bottom mask to the top mask. If we look at the compound mask, we option click here. All right, this is the compound mask. You can see that this mask is being added to an empty mask, which is totally black. We're just gonna paint white here. So let's just click on this top mask and let's just paint white here. So now we have a more precise mask. So if you look at the result, you can see now there's a lot more detail being brought back into this image. So the haze reduction now works better. 
So this was the before and the after. So that was the haze removal tool. I hope you can see it's a very powerful tool that can be used in any situation where you want to make the colors pop or enhance the detail in a scene. As you've seen, the haze removal tool works on the entire image, but with the magic of layers and masks, you can actually make the haze removal work on only part of an image. And that's where you get really the power of Affinity Photo 2.0. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.